Hello and welcome to this video on advanced business rules. Now you probably have watched the overview business rules video already and that led you to want to know more about business rules. So in this video we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the settings and some of the options that you can use in those business rules when you're creating them or modifying them. So I'm already in the new track it system as you can see here under configuration. Again if you don't remember where that is it's very easy to find. You click on the menu and track it and then you click on configuration and that'll bring you right to it. So we're going to go ahead and select SLAs and business rules and we're going to open the business rules section. Okay so to start off we're going to start with a clean rule here. We're just going to click new. Notice that the business rule has a name and it has a description. You should fill this out because it lets other people know what this rule is actually doing. Now notice under conditions, here you define what conditions must be met before this business rule is going to fire. So if I click this drop down next to when, you'll see there are several options here. We have requester, ticket notes, ticket, assignment notes, assignment, announcement, and solution. Those are all the different record types. And then we have new email received. So for all of these record types that we have, you can select this record type and then say you want something to occur when one of those records is created, updated, or deleted. If you select new email received, you'll notice the created, updated, or deleted goes away because this is a single event when an email comes into the inbox for track it. So if we go back for a moment and we pick ticket, we can now say we want this business rule to fire whenever a new ticket is created. So if you have something that you want to happen Every single time a new ticket comes in, if you want to evaluate some kind of criteria and make sure that that ticket is being routed the right department or the right location or to the right technician or whatever the case may be, you could set up a rule here anytime a ticket is created, anytime a ticket is updated or anytime a ticket is deleted. Now, once you've specified which record type and whether you want it to happen when it's created, updated or deleted, you now have the opportunity to specify other conditions to go along with that. So here you could select a specific field and then select a condition and then enter a value. So here are all the fields that are part of a work order ticket in the track it system. If you scroll down this list, you'll see things like the category and the technician and there are dates and these are all the fields that you would see in a ticket. You'll see the requester, you'll see the requester email address, so you have access to every field that is part of a work order ticket. So there are quite a few options here to do almost anything you want to do with a ticket. So for example, let's say I have a specific requester and every time a ticket comes in from that person, I need to check something about it. So maybe this is your CEO or maybe it's uh, your biggest customer, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to select requester. I'm going to say when the requester equals, then when I go to select a value, I have a few different options here. These options with curly braces around them, these are variables or functions that you can use when building your conditions for your rule. You will see those at the top of the list here. If you scroll down a little further, you will see actual values in the drop-down list. Those are actual requesters from your Trackit system. So if you want to select one of those users, now we have a condition. So now we can say when a new ticket is created, and the requester equals Joe user. Now if I have other conditions that I want to add, I could just click the plus sign. Another condition is added. I can click this drop down and select another field. So maybe I want to say when the category equals email services. Now if the requester equals Joe user or the category equals email services, then this business rule will fire. Alternatively, I could make this say does not equal. Now this rule is going to fire anytime there is any other category besides email services. I also have other options in here. If I'm dealing with numbers or dates, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, we have contains. So you have several different options here that you can deal with. You also have these has not changed or has changed. So you may have a situation where you want to send a message to somebody based on a status update. So you could click the drop down here 
and you could go find status and you could say has changed notice my variable value over here goes away because all we're doing now is saying we want this rule to happen when the status has changed and then we're going to define the actions that we want to occur so let's take a little deeper look at some of these variables here I click this drop down I can use blank so I can say when a ticket is created and the requester is blank so this could happen if the email address that the person sent the email from when it came into the system and generated a new ticket maybe that email address didn't exist in the tracker system at all so the ticket was created with a blank requester maybe you want to notify someone or assign the ticket to a certain person or send a notification back to that user something like that so that's a, a use case there sometimes something may be related to the app server itself that you're running on so this is the name of the track it application server would get plugged in here date diff is a way to do a date difference so here you could say you want to do some sort of notification or some sort of action if the difference between these two dates is less than or greater than a certain value so there are certain things you may want to do based on that so maybe the difference in the date between the time the ticket was opened and the time the ticket was updated by a technician maybe if that's more than a certain amount you want to escalate or you want to notify someone so that could be a useful formula right there so there are many different options here and the track it help system will go into detail in all of these and how they are used some of you may be familiar with substring when you're looking for a specific piece of text within a larger string so that could be useful you may be looking for a time zone for a particular instance you want to deal with so there are many different options there but once you have your conditions all defined you'll expand the plus sign here next to define actions and here's where you define the actions that can occur now we can send a notification we can update a record we can create a record or we can create a linked record once we pick what we want to do here that will drive the settings that happen in the next two boxes here. So if we say send a notification, you'll notice this second option gets grayed out because we're creating a notification and then you have a button here that says notification details. If I click on that, it's going to allow me to build the email message that I want to send in this particular case. So you may recall email templates in the old version of Trackit, we had certain templates for certain conditions. In this system, you can generate email templates for just about any scenario you want. Because now that I've created this rule, anytime this condition occurs, this email is going to be sent out. So I can pick the technicians I want to send it to. I could say I want to send to all administrators. I can say I want to send it to the requester or to the requester's alternate email ID because they do have an alternate email ID field if they have a secondary email address. I can punch in some extra email addresses here if I want, if there are people that I just want to be carbon copied on these scenarios, if it's system administrators or vendors or anything like that. So here we have a list of all the fields that are available within the item that we're working on. So if you recall, we selected that we are acting on a ticket in this case. And so we have a list of all the ticket fields here. And so I can pick one of these fields and I can say insert in the subject and it'll insert this variable in the subject, or I could say insert in the message body, and it was inserted in the message body. You'll notice I can also go down and I can type some text, and then I could, if I want to put a variable here, I can simply type a curly brace, and I'll get a drop down list of variables that are available. Now, these aren't fields that are up here in this drop down list above, these are the expressions like we saw a moment ago when we were building our rule. So I have access to those as well. One other thing I need to mention here before we move on is you can put HTML in these as well. You just have to manually enter the HTML encoding that you want. So I'm going to cancel out of here. And we're going to take a look at if I don't want to send a notification when my condition occurs, if I want to update a record, I can select that. I can select what type of update I'm doing, whether I'm adding a ticket note to the ticket or whether I'm updating values in the ticket. I'm going to click update ticket values here and then select edit fields. The first thing we have to do here in order to get an action to occur on this record is we have to map the ticket ID. So we select the field, we go down and we select ticket ID. We say use a value from the current record. We click this and we select ticket ID. Now the reason we do this is because if we're going to add a ticket note or any other value that's related to this ticket, 
we need to make sure that this condition here knows what the ticket ID is and has it stored. So we map that first, then we come over here and add another condition. And let's say we want to change the category to a certain value. So we're going to scroll past our variables here because we don't want any of those. And let's say we're going to say building maintenance. So let's say the example we're doing today is when a certain person logs a ticket, we want to go and change the category to building maintenance. If we want to change anything else, we would just click another plus, we would add that as well. And if there are other actions we want to occur, we can click the plus sign here. We could, we could say create record. We could pick the record type we want to create. We could create another requester record. We could create another ticket. We could create an announcement. If we select requester, for example, and we say select edit fields, well, now we click this drop down box here and we get a list of requester fields. So now we could generate a new requester record and fill in all the values in that record right here. We could also say we want to create an announcement or a solution. So you could set up business rules where technicians could email a certain value or a certain type of formatted email into the system and it would automatically generate a new solution in the system for that. You could also create a linked record. So if you want to create an assignment that's linked to the parent ticket, you could do that. If you want to update the record and add a note, you could do that as well. So up above we said update record, update ticket values. Now we're saying update record. I could select add ticket note, select fields. I could come here. I can say the ticket ID has to be the ticket ID from the main ticket. Add another value here. And I can say the note is and I can go ahead and type in the value that I want to put here and that will add a note to this ticket. Now if I try to do this without mapping that ticket ID value the system is going to warn you so let's say I didn't have that condition and I want to change the assign to technician to this person right here I try to apply it it's going to warn me and say I have to map my ticket ID. So it's always a good idea to just map your ticket ID to make sure that you're updating the proper record, especially if you're updating a ticket via an email kind of update. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out of this now. Cancel out of here. Okay, so we're going to dig into another rule here as an example, just to show you some of the other options that are available. So let's check out notify a technician when a ticket's due date is overdue. Let's open up this canned business rule here and take a look. So here we go. The conditions are when a new ticket is created with the status of open and an expected due date and time not blank and an expected due date and time has been updated, which means it started out possibly blank but is now not blank. In that scenario, we'd want to send a notification. Click notification details to see what we're sending. So here's the template that's all set up. It's set up to go to the technician who's assigned to that ticket. Here's the information in the email. And we're going to update the record. We're going to update the ticket values. Notice the ticket ID is mapped here. And notice the assigned to technician is now the escalate to technician. So the ticket is being reassigned now. And here's where things get interesting. It's the defined schedule here. So the action here doesn't occur immediately. It occurs at a later time. So this rule, when a new ticket is created, this rule will fire. This job will be queued in the system and it will sit there and it will wait until two hours after the expected due date and time. Now, it's only going to do the action if the ticket is still open because that was one of our conditions. But if that ticket is still open two hours after the expected due date and time, then the actions that we defined earlier are going to occur. The email notification is going to go out and the ticket is going to be reassigned. This time zone right here doesn't matter so much because we're not adhering to a work schedule for this, so this is going to occur at any moment. This time zone was the one that was picked in here when this uh, server was installed, so don't pay too much attention to that unless you're going to select a work schedule here and make sure that this rule only fires within a work schedule, but we're not doing that. That is an important option to notice. If you are defining a business rule and you want it to only occur within business hours, 
then you would make sure your time zone is correct here and you would make sure your work schedule is selected here on the right and you would have to configure your work schedule through the work schedule configuration. So if I click cancel, we can go back to all and select operating hours, work schedules, and here's where I set that up. So this has been a little more detail on the business rules in Trackit. Please check out our other videos on Trackit 2017 by accessing our online documentation by clicking the help link in the upper right hand corner of the Trackit application. You can also find our documentation page by following the link here, docs.bmc.com slash docs slash display slash Trackit 2017. Some other important links to remember are the Trackit community, where you can talk about Trackit features and functionality with other Trackit users at community.trackit.com. If you need technical assistance, you can find phone numbers and other contact information for our technical support team at support.trackit.com. And for general license renewal and product information, you can always visit trackit.com. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope it has been helpful to you.